Less than six months into the government as Prime Minister, Indira Gandhi took a bold decision that pitted her against her own party. She did the unthinkable, devaluing the rupee. Critics said she had let down India. But why did she do it? And how did this become such a milestone? On the 6th of June 1966, the ominous 6666, the Indian rupee was devalued. This was at that time seen as a shocking sellout, a mortgaging of our nation's independence. This reaction may seem extreme today, but in 1966, Indira Gandhi's decision to devalue the rupee was a shocker and a response to a balance of payment crisis. The 1965 war and the drought the next year had put tremendous pressure on the Indian economy. There was runaway inflation, a severe shortage of food and the country's foreign exchange had depleted drastically. While India had been running trade deficits, that is higher imports to exports since 1947, the gap had been managed with foreign aid. But in 1966, the US cut off aid at the time of the Indo-Pak War. From foreign aid of 819 crore rupees in 1965, aid came to nil in 1966. As a condition to resume aid, the World Bank, which used to channel the foreign aid, asked India to devalue the rupee. The US and the IMF also insisted that India liberalize imports as a condition for receiving aid and loans. When Indira visited US in March 1966, US President Lyndon Johnson promised additional food supply and $900 million in non-project aid in return for devaluation. The World Bank also agreed to provide project loans. Indira Gandhi agreed to devalue the rupee during this US trip. But it was also how she dealt with this political hot potato that determined what happened next. On Sunday, the 6th of June 1966, Indira called a surprise cabinet meeting. While the issue of devaluation was not on the official agenda, it was taken up and a decision taken. The hurry was because the IMF board was to meet in Washington a few hours after the cabinet met in New Delhi to approve the new exchange rates. In one swoop, the rupee was devalued by around 57% from 4 rupees 76 paise to a dollar to 7 rupees 50 paise to the US dollar. While this doesn't seem so shocking today when the rupee is at 73 against a dollar, in 1966 it could have been political suicide for Indira. She was accused of being a lackey of Western powers when she announced the devaluation. The critics became more vocal when the promised US aid didn't materialize soon after the devaluation. Instead of increasing assistance, President Johnson took direct charge of aid and resorted to blackmail, the so-called ship-to-mouse tactics in providing food assistance. Meanwhile, Indira's most virulent critics were from within her own party. Congress president and the head of the powerful syndicate K. Kamraj was furious. More so because Indira hadn't even consulted him before taking the decision. Kamraj felt that the devaluation wouldn't go down well with the people during the 1967 general election, which was barely six months away. Facing widespread criticism, Indira addressed the nation on All India Radio on the 12th of June. She laid out the facts and underlined the economic crisis India was faced with. She said the situation called for a bitter medicine to restore the nation to economic health. With this decision taken, Indira now took on her critics and foes. 
exasperated by US President Johnson's attitude, Indira embarrassed the US on the world stage in July by issuing a statement accusing the US of wanton bombings of Vietnam. In July itself, she travelled to Moscow where India and the Soviet Union issued a joint statement criticising the US's war in Vietnam. This marked a realignment for India, a step closer to the USSR even as cold winds gripped India's ties with the USA. While there was debate on Indira Gandhi's decision to devalue the rupee in 1966, the fact is that she had little option. Looking back, what is significant is how one tough decision taken changed the course of India's modern history in so many ways.